I encourage all of you to um, get into this software and use it as much as you, you can and somehow you know, develop your expertise in process uh, analysis, process improvement. So uh, if I just briefly remind you what we have done so far is that we have been trying to learn uh, this process. Uh, this process is that uh, you are purchasing things and usually purchasing start from requester and requester send that uh, pro the purchase request to the manager and manager reviews that. And uh, if everything is good, then he or she transfer that to purchasing agent and purchasing agent is going to look for suppliers and supplier is going to uh, send that to the purchasing agent and then receive the money. And that's the process, the, you know, the larger process, uh, the overview of the process. And this data is actually stored in ERP system, enterprise resource planning system. And as a, a process improvement person, you are going to you know, get the data from ERP or you can actually write everything down and put it into your spreadsheet and then uh, you know, read it on your uh, software and then do all the, all the analysis. So uh, we wanted to solve these problems, inefficient operations, and uh, uh, investigate whether all the cases are following the compliance proto protocol. And the third thing was uh, there are complaints about process duration. So some of them are meeting the, the uh, target, but uh, uh, many of them are not meeting the target and what is happening and why that is happening that you want to understand. And what we did was we collected the data and we, um, uh, you know, opened this the data. So let me show you this code again. So um, if you have not done so, please open the data yourself. What, what you can do is uh, you can go to Disco, right? And then you can open that data, say new. If you have not done that, discard changes and load your own data. And I know some of you had a difficulty last time. So without opening the data in Excel, just download the data from uh, course canvas and then uh, run the data yourself. That's what we wanted to do. So purchasing example.csv, I'm gonna open that. And then if you do nothing, it should be fine, especially uh, start timestamp and complete timestamp. That's something that can cause problem if you opened it on your Excel. So my recommendation is not to open it in Excel at this point, because you know um, this data was made in Europe, not in the United States. So the format is already a bit different and that is causing some problem when you are opening it in your Excel. So we have seen this case ID and uh, uh, starts uh, start timestamp and complete timestamp and activity and resource and role. So these uh, six columns are something that you need uh, to run this uh, uh, software. If you don't have the data, of course you cannot you know, use this software, but if you do have the data like this, then you can do that. And I said that it is important for you to specify the column as the right characteristic of the column. For example, you know, timestamp has to be recognized as timestamp, right? And case ID has to be case ID, right? And uh, uh, activity is a very important one. So because that is the one that we are drawing the graph on. So activity is this one. So you have to use this mail uh, icon there and resource is right there. Resource is the people who are doing the thing and role Role is other, so I, I just made it uh, activity, but role is supposed to be other. So if you specify them right, then now you can start import, right? And then uh, it draws uh, your process map and you can zoom in and out, right? Zoom in and out like that so that you can investigate it uh, right. So we can see um, there were a total of 608 cases, and here's a starting point. The first process was 
create purchase requisition and and so forth. And at the end was pay invoice and this endpoint. And um, another thing that I wanted to show was that uh, activities now, uh, right now, zero uh, percent. If you increase activities, oh, actually zero percent. If you make it zero percent, what happens is that uh, activities that uh, with the most frequent uh, uh, path are going to show up. So before we had a lot of a lot of them, but now only. Uh, the activities that are showing the most frequency, they are showing up in your map. So if you look at more in detail, then you scroll up to say 50% or 100% or when you have a lot of uh, procedures in between, then you know this is the way to, to investigate more in detail, right? So here uh, you see more details. And now in the same way, you can increase the path, right? Path. Uh, now we had a 0% before, now we are going to increase to 100% so that we can see what is happening exactly uh, in the process. That's all shown here, and that's a path. So you can inc increase that, right? So that's what we learned last time. And now I was covering statistics, and uh, we were discussing, and then we stopped in the middle. So if you look at the overview, on your right hand, you see events. How many events did we have? It says 9,119 events uh, existed in this process. What does that mean? So in total, you have 608 cases, right? Or eight requests for proposers. However, that consisted of uh, 9,119 uh, events inside of them. So in other words, if you divide them by 608, about you know, uh, uh, you know, 12 or 13 or 15, uh, 15 events per cases it had, uh, so that we can can see. Activities uh, is also um, in total. You could have 21 activities there. And median case duration was 11.9 day, and mean case duration was 21.5 day. And start date and end date is uh, January 1st, 2011, and end date was uh, October 14th, 2011. You, you can see the format of the date is a little bit different. And we can also see, uh, for example, case ID number one, the first case, uh, it had 17 events inside of the case. And the variant, in other words, what kind of pattern it is following amongst all these cases is variant two. And it started on January 1st and finished on uh, January 4th. And duration was three days and 15 hours. So that information is given here. And we went through this statistics together, for example, active cases over time. Um, active cases were increasing in the beginning of the year and it died down and then it began to accumulate or gain at the end of the year, uh, August and, and, and July uh, in the time period that we saw. And case variants, uh, case variance is also an important thing that we need to understand. Um, for example, you know, uh, case variant one could be uh, following the normal uh, process from uh, request to, to invoice. But uh, case three would be abnormal process. For example, it started, but uh, you thought that, oh, this case is, is uh, shaky and, and uh, it's something that we cannot handle. And you just uh, you know, said, oh, we cannot handle it. Uh, you finished that uh, process right there. Then it could be variant to two or three, right? So it could have various combinations of events. As a result, uh, you can have uh, many variants of cases. So that is what is shown here. So case variant one, uh, there was 30, 30, 88 cases followed variant one, variant two, 77 cases, variant three, 63 cases, variant four, 48 cases and so forth. And if you go down there, variant 33, only two cases, variant 62, only one case. So there were you know, unique cases, case uh, that uh, had uh, their own 
variant there. So kind of exceptions. And events per, per case, how many events did we have? The most one was uh, 63, right? 63 cases had only two events. So probably you started and ended. You thought that it, you, know, you went through this screening process saying, oh, this does not fit into our, our um, uh, regulation or our capacity, our, our budget. So you just stopped there. That's uh, 63 cases and uh, 32 cases had only three events. And then uh, 49 cases had uh, uh, four events. And what about this one? Um, eight, 106 cases had 18 events. That's a lot of cases, right? So that information you can see. I think, you know, uh, probably you want to have a short number of events and uh, there might be a better situation for you. And, and you can see the distribution of the events right away. Case duration, uh, this is an, another Im important uh, statistics. And you can see that uh, many of them were lasting only one day and 12 hours. That's 80 cases, wow. So on, you know, 80 cases was kind of an easy case that you were able to process very quickly. However, if you, as you move on, some of them, for example, 16 case took 17 days. So it, uh, uh, it took you many days to process this case. And if you go the, this side, then you see, oh, wow, you know, six case took 83 days and uh, nine case took 81 days and uh, five case 94 days. Let's see, what about this one? Uh, one case took you 109 days. So we see that some of the cases were really uh, taking extended period of time. And that obviously was you know, stressful or something happened in between. So that needs to be investigated later. And mean activity duration, uh, one activity, how long did it take? Um, you know, some of them are taking 14 or 15, very short time, but uh, if you go down there, some other uh, activities are taking three hours, four hours, uh, like that. And mean waiting time, I think waiting time is also a very good uh, indicator for you to understand. So if you look at here, uh, waiting time was 13 hours, uh, 40 minutes, and uh, one day and 16 minutes, that's 285 cases. So 134 cases waited for 13 hours and uh, 285 cases waited for one day and 16 minutes. So these statistics you can see and by looking at and going through these statistics, you can understand your process much better than before. And now let's go to activity. Activity, uh, if you look at the activity, you see that uh, frequency, right? Frequency and activities. Uh, per activity, how many uh, frequency were happening is given right here. And uh, median duration. So, so one activity is uh, lasting uh, one day and one hour. Uh, and, then, and then those distributions you can check here, mean duration, median duration, a very similar thing, and duration range and aggregation duration you can check. And now let's go to resource. Resources are another useful part of your analysis. And you see that um, people's name here, right? So your employees or people who are involved in the process are named here. And you can see uh, Magdalena Preduta. She uh, was one of the most, most popular or most uh, you know, frequently used person and uh, 1,089 times she was used uh, during this uh, process mapping time from January till October. And mean duration per case was 24 minutes and mean, uh, median duration was 24 minutes. Mean duration was one hour, 53 minutes and duration range was 14 hour and 35 minutes. So you can see that uh, the, how this, the, this person performed and how many uh, cases she handled, all those things you can see right here. So we can see that uh, she was a very important person. And uh, if 
you want to figure anything out, you want to talk with her because she has dealt with most of the cases, I think. And then the next person was uh, uh, Karel de Groot, and uh, she was also showing a lot of frequency and, and francosis the perrier and so forth. So you can see, you know, uh, who are working really hard, who are not, and somehow, you know, these people might be managers and uh, you can see the volume of the work they are processing every day that can be analyzed there. And now role, uh, in role we have a purchasing agent, requester, financial manager, supplier and request manager. And purchasing uh, agent is the one who is uh, involved in this process the most frequently and requester the next and so forth. So you can understand the bottlenecks and utilization of your process and resources right here. And if you have done that, now you, you can go to cases. Now here, cases are showing you, you the variant. What kind of variants, what kind of patterns of the process is this process going through is well shown in these cases. So complete log shows that uh, case one to 608, you know, how many events it had all those things are shown here. And variant one, 88 cases, 14.47% uh, of your total uh, cases uh, follow the variant one. And if you look at the, the graph here, uh, activity one was creating purchase requisition and Kim Tessa was the one who processed and it, it went through 18 activities, right? So in uh, um, variant one uh, had 18 activities and then the duration was six days and 14 hours. So it, I think this is a normal uh, process. It's pretty quick process actually, if you can have everything processed, 18 pro things in uh, six, six days, that's an impressive achievement. And uh, it, it was done right there. And, uh, and the case is right here. So case three and case 18, case 19, case 25, 27 are going through the same uh, uh, process. These are going through the same process. For example, you know, if you are buying uh, a furniture, it may go through a similar process. However, if you are buying uh, equipment that, uh, that is over say $1 million, right? Then it might be more complicated uh, so that that uh, variant will be different, right? So that is shown in, in this variant. And variant two had 17 cases, very similar, but you can, I, I don't know yet, but uh, you can see what is different, right? What is different? Analyze purchase requisition, yeah. So, so uh, variant one had create purchase requisition and then analyze it and then went to create request quotation. But variant two did not have that process. Right, so so it after creating purchase requisition, it directly went to creating request for quotation. Right, so in the case the the requisition request was done correctly or right, and it did not need to have any analysis. That's why it moved to the next phase very quickly. But variant one, there are some cases, actually many cases. Uh, how many of them? 88 cases had to be analyzed after submission of the request and so forth. So you can, you know, oh, and the variant three is very interesting because it went in and then it created purchase requisition, but right away you analyzed it and then nothing happened. So it's really interesting because a sizable number of cases, six, three of them were following this pattern. So um, it's kind of, you know, surprising why the case stopped after analyzing purchase requisition, what were the reasons? At this point, we don't know. Maybe uh, there were a note or you have to talk with the people, for example, uh, in, uh, Maurice Freeman uh, at, th at uh, case 32, and then uh, 63, Heinz got Schmidt, and 89, Maurice Freeman again, 109, Again, Heinz Kostman and 151, Maurice Heinz, Maurice Heinz, Francis, you know, Francis Odell. So you need to talk with those people and see what happened with that, right? So those are people who made the decision to stop 
after analyzing the purchase requisition. So you may want to talk with them why they stopped. So uh, if you just go through one by one like that, and it gives you a pretty good idea about your processes and what kind of variants that they went through and who were in charge of that uh, decision and all those things that you can uh, investigate and, and discuss with them. So now uh, I am now interested in um, how to figure out uh, these cases. So let's go to now, please click on map. We are coming back to the map, process map here. And then I what I want to do is I want to add filter on this map. So I want you to follow along with me and I'm gonna add filter here. So if I click on the filter on the uh, bottom left, then it brings you on to this filter page where you can add filters. So we have two types of filters. The first filter is variation filter. Um, and uh, uh, for example, you know, it deals with high variation of case behavior. That's a very variation filter, but I'm gonna be using performance filter at this point. So uh, let me add filter. So it says, I added the performance filter. And the moment I added the performance filter, it shows how the cases are performing, right? Performing here. And if you see filter cases by, and if you click on that, there are various performance filters that you can use. For example, case duration, which is the uh, most important thing that I'm, I'll be using here. It shows how many, um, days it took for you to process the case, right? So here, uh, 10 hours, 42 minutes were the shortest duration. So one case was just done in 10 hours. The longest day was uh, 109 days and nine hours. So, you know, uh, one third of the year was spent to process this, this case. And you can, you can use filter if you, as you um, slide it to your right, you know, you can change uh, what, how many filter uh, cases you are going to include, right? Like, like this, or, you know, you can use the right bar, right uh, filter, and then move it around and choose certain things as you want, right? Um, before doing that, let me just go over this case duration and other uh, filter information. So number of events, you know, for example, how many of them? So if you are interested in, yeah, why some, some uh, cases are uh, just uh, covered only uh, three or four events only, then you may want to, uh, you know, cover this uh, two to five five uh, events and why that happened that you can choose there. And case utilization, um, you know, it's a 6% to 41% and why some are utilized very little and some are utilized very heavily that can be, uh, uh, you know, looked into and total active time, total active time. So how long has it been active? Some of them 14 minutes only some of them in three days and four hours, you know, so you can uh, investigate that and you can go to now mean active time, the similar thing and maximum active time and total waiting time. Why are some uh, cases are waiting so much? And so you can choose them and then do uh, your analysis there and mean waiting time too. So some of them are done very quickly. Some of them are not. Why is that the case? You can do the analysis there too. So let's go back to case duration. Our uh, goal is that uh, we want to see if we are meeting the target. And if you remember from last class, the target was 21 days, right? 21 days. Did it take 21 days or more than 21 days that had to be determined? And if you look at here, this one, the bottom one, you can, and you can move on quickly. And I want to see, you know, uh, if any any cases any cases were taking more than twenty one days. Why is that the case? I want to choose them. So uh, I want to just uh, uh, select twenty cases with more than twenty one days, right? So these cases I want to choose 
and we see that that's 15% of cases. And if you have done that, if you um, sell, adjusted your, um, your filter, then now you can apply filter. So um, top uh, bottom right, you see apply filter button and you click on it. And then now you see your, your process map uh, with, with only 92 cases. Look at here, it's 92 cases. And if I zoom in a little bit, okay, 92 cases. And we see that uh, 92 cases, how they went through the process. For example, it created re uh, purchase requisition and then it moved 42 of them moved directly to create requests for quotation. However, 50 of them went to analyze purchase requisition and then came to this creating re request for quotation. So uh, we see this variation here. And the 92 case went to the next phase, analyze request for quotation. And then it went to uh, amend the request quotation. So out of 394, I'm sorry, so we had 92 coming in to analyze the request for quotation, right? So we had only 92 cases. However, you know, uh, all of them went through, probably many of them, not, I'm not so sure if all of them did or not, but uh, 92, all of them, or most of them went to amend the request for quotation and then came back. This is a loop. And we see that uh, uh, 302 cases were coming in and coming out. And we see this loop and probably if you uh, uh, see that on average, uh, one case had three amendments, right? So uh, the amendment happens three times per uh, this case. So we see that this was uh, taking place a very long time for these this, uh, cases. And then if they, they were done out of 92, we see only 83 went to the next phase and the rest of them, nine cases, I think, yeah, nine cases when were abandoned or it was done, oh yeah, we cannot do anything with that. So it was rejected there. 83 cases moved on to the next phase, send a request for quotation for supplier and comparison map, analyze the quotation comparison map, choose the best option um, and set a condition with the supplier create purchase order, confirm purchase order, deliver goods services, release purchase order. And then here we see another interesting process. Uh, this is normal process on your left, approve purchase order for payment, send invoices and release supply invoices. And th these are a normal process, but six cases out of this went to set a dispute with suppliers, right? So we see that, uh, 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 this supplies among religious supplies invoice, 18 of them came to a dispute and six, six of them went to went back to religious purchase order. And then it came back to uh, settling dispute order. And among them, uh, 18 of them went to the next one and they took some time for them to do so, right? Authorized supplies invoice. And then lastly, they paid invoice and the process came to an end. So we see, that uh, this one took some time for, for us to do. And if you look at uh, the statistics, uh, we can see more things. For example, uh, there were 92 cases like that and mean, mean case duration was 87 days. So uh, well over three months uh, they spent to process this and event was 2,112 two and we can see all, all the things that we have seen before. And then uh, you can go to tr case duration and you see that uh, 76 days, the, the shortest one is 74 days and 76 days and so forth. So it's taking a lot of time to do that. <clears throat> and also if you go to um, uh, cases, so you can see uh, what case was taking such a long time that can be also analyzed right here, right? Wow, so it's this one, this one, how many events did you have? 26 events, 
29 events you had for case number 459. So you see that. Let us go back to map. And I want to show you an interesting uh, thing that you can do. Uh, on the bottom, you see animation here, right? So if you click on this animation, it is going to now simulate what is happening with this process. And it will visually show you what's happening. Let's uh, try animation. And I'm going to move this one to fast. And I'm going to start here. So you see cases moving one by one. And one of the cases came in. It went through. It had to, it had to be um, amended. So it amended, went there, and it came back, and then went back. Right, only two cases, but uh, it was there was a loop, and uh, multiple times it was uh, uh, amended, and then new cases coming in. So we know that the the um, starting process was doing being done very quickly. However, this amendment is taking time. Right, it's a slowly moving, slowly moving. Especially this red line is a kind of a bottleneck. Now here we see some bottleneck too, because uh, because these are really moving very slowly from uh, the third process to the fourth process for some reason. And we need to look at that. And then from here to there, we see you know, a lot of cases are just stuck there, right? If you continue to uh, you know, play it, you will see, uh, maybe I can move it a little bit, but let me just wait for a few seconds. So you know, it shows it, it's moving fast and we see clearly a bottleneck from here to there, and that is soon. And uh, a few cases were fl flowing very quickly down there and then uh, approved and, and came to an end, right? Yeah, it's relatively quickly flowing, right? And the, here is a bottleneck. It takes some time here, and then it comes over there. Uh, while doing so, you, you see that this is a huge bottleneck being created from uh, third step, fourth step, fifth step. I think that's the thing where um, it's taking much most of the time. That's what we see. Okay, so if you do that, I want to just uh, you can actually export this as a video. You can download the video. If you do this exporting, then it is going to save it as an AVI file. So it's a moving file a video clip that you can download and you can use it and show it to your manager or pro, uh, uh, project sponsor. Those things can be done. Right? So now um, we learned that this is clearly, uh, the, the, here is a bottleneck one and this is bottleneck two. So we see two bottlenecks at least in this process, especially for the, the things that uh, we have done so far. And I want to go to uh, statistics or cases. Actually, I want to go to cases and see who they are, who is involved in that, right? So, um, so these are the people involved in that process and you can, you can investigate them too, right? Now, let me show you another uh, cool thing that you can do. Um, if you scroll down, let's uh, first remove the filter. So I'm going to go to filter, click on filter, and I want to remove the filter. So what you do is uh, you come over here. I want to remove this X sign. You click on it, you remove it, and then you have to click on apply filter. Then you can remove the filter and you are back to the original um, process map where you can see 608 cases came in. And if you scroll down, now what we want to do is we want to uh, see whether there is a compliance issue. And we see that, uh, look at here, send the invoice and release suppliers invoice and authorize suppliers invoice. So this is a normal process to go through. However, for some reason, 10 cases, these 10 cases skipped religious supplies invoice and directly they paid authorized supplies invoice payment. 
So for some reason, this step was skipped uh, and uh, this can be a serious violation of the company's uh, regulation. And it might not be transparent as we would like to see. So uh, I wanna see why this one happened and who were involved with these decisions and that can be investigated here. So you, cl you click on that and then you see um, two things, frequency and performance, right? So frequency, 10 times it happened. Performance says Twitter duration was six days and so forth. And what you can do is at the bottom, it says filter this path. So we can filter it. So click on that and then apply filter. So we are filtering this activity and apply filter. Then uh, it chooses only those 10 cases and help us to see what exact process it went through. And that is uh, visualized right here. So 10 cases came in, seven of them analyzed, three of them uh, directly created the request and amendment process, only one of them went through amendment process and all that was done right here, right? And if you go to cases now, you see who were the people involved in this process, especially um, send invoice and uh, sub authorized suppliers invoice payment. So Esmeralda Clay, she was the one who sent this uh, case to Pedro Alvarez right away, right? And then this one, again, okay, send invoice Esmeralda to Carolda uh, Nimuata. And the third one, Q Khan did that to Caralda. And Sean Manny did that too. And we see this one, Esmeralda did it. So Esmeralda is appearing a lot. And Karen, Q did that. Esmeralda and Q and Q again. So you need to talk with them and see what happened with the cases. And uh, um, if there was an abnormality that has to be fixed and you have to advise them or admonish them not to repeat that. And uh, let's go back to map. Uh, another thing is frequency. There's a frequency view and also there is a performance view. A performance view shows you hear total duration, right? So how many days is stated, 10 of them as a whole, what happened? And you can change that to mean duration and you know, 14.5 uh, hours from creating uh, requisition to analyze purchase and that can be shown there and you can understand that better, right? So that's another thing. And the last thing that I wanna show you is now we have been looking at activity in the process map, but you can change it to a uh, uh, role. So let's do that. So I'm going to click on this icon next to folder. On your right, you see um, a cabin, you know, file cabinet, and click on that. And here we are going to reload the data, right? Reload the data over here. So click on that, and then. We are on the initial page that we faced before when we opened this software. And what I'm gonna be doing is now activity, I'm gonna to change to other and make role or um, yeah, role as to an activity, right? So I changed the role, a requester, this one as an activity and uh, activity as a other, and then I'm going to import and see what happens. And it shows you, you know, the process that you are going through. So it comes to the request first, 2,635 times. So somehow 608 cases only, but there are a lot of repetition or going back and forth and the requester is dealing with it 2,635 times and this thick arrow means that a lot of them is moving out of 2,635, 1,603 cases are moving on to purchasing agents directly, right? And then in between some of them, 380 to go to request manager. 
So uh, this one can be helpful for you to understand how it is uh, going through uh, your process and who is, uh, you know, dealing with these cases yourself that can be seen there. And let me go back and all of the, I will do reload again, reload. I want to make this one as an activity too. So activity as activity, role as an activity, and then run it, start input. And then now it shows more comprehensive figure of the process. So we see that create purchase requisition requester is doing that. So we have now not only the process itself, but, but also who is working on that process is revealed in there. So it's more comprehensive figure. It's already been more com uh, uh, complex, but uh, it's, it's you know, detailed information that you can understand, right? And similarly, you can now do the people thing, right? Go back here and reload and you change this one to other, role as other, and resource as say activity, and what happens there. And you see the movement of the people now, you know. Um, so we, what is the starting point? This is end point. Oh, this is the starting point. This is an end point. So 54 cases came in and Tesca loops. Uh, she dealt with that and she sent it to some somebody. They came over there, Carol Degroot. And you see Carol Degroot is being used so uh, often, 1,067 times and Magdalena uh, Predutas is working very hard and all this you know, relationship between people and movement of the things around can be shown here too as well, right? So this is a really powerful tool for you to analyze your data. And uh, I hope uh, you will, you know, uh, exercise and use it uh, as many times as possible and have a good grasp on it and uh, uh, use it for your analysis.